Hello viewers, today we are going to study about the structure of the pollen grain. First of all, we must know about that what is the study of the pollen grain. The study of the pollen grain is also called as the palynology. And what are these pollen grains? So pollen grains are the male reproductive bodies. Okay. And if we see the structure of the pollen grain, so they are oval or they are round in shape. Always the pollen grain is considered as a unicellular structure and it is having a single nucleus. We can say that it is uninucleate. If we talk about the size of the pollen grain, the size of the pollen grain varies between 10 micron to 200 micron. Okay. Now, the smallest pollen grain, the smallest pollen grain is of myosotis and that is about the 10 micron and the largest pollen grain and the largest pollen grain is of the mirabilis and it is having the size of 250 microns. Now, if we see the structure, if we see the structure of the pollen grain, then in a structure of a pollen grain, you can see from outside that there are two walls, okay, which are surrounding the pollen grain. And these two walls are the outermost one is known as the exine and the inner one is known as the intine. So the pollen grain is surrounded by two walls, exine and intine. And this exine and intine term was first of all given by a scientist whose name was Fritsch. Okay. Now you can also see here that this exine is very much thick layer while the intine is what a thin layer. So we can say that exine is also classified into two layers. One is known as the act enzyme exine and the another one is known as end enzyme exine is divided into two categories act exine and the another one is known as end exine. Again this act exine is divided into three layers outer layer middle layer and inner layer these layers are respectively called as tectum the second layer is known as the baculum and the third layer is known as what the foot layer which is the innermost layer okay if we see if we see a pollen grain from inside we can see that a peripheral nucleus is present why a peripheral nucleus is present because in a mature pollen grain, a big vacuole is present. Initially, the vacuole was not so much big in size. It was very small in size. There were many small vacuoles present in the pollen grain. But as soon as the pollen grain mature, many small vacuoles combine together to form a big vacuole. And due to the formation of this big vacuole, what happens that the nucleus and the cytoplasm are shifted towards the periphery okay so that's why you can see that a peripheral nucleus and a peripheral cytoplasm is present now as we have said that a pollen grain is surrounded by two layers so have a discussion here that what is an exine layer so you must know that this exine layer is a thick layer is a very much thick layer as we have seen the classification of the exine which itself shows that it is too much thick layer and you must also know that this exine is ornamented Ornamented means its surface is having many sculpturings. Okay, the sculpturings may be like this type. Some pollen grains may have like this type of the uh, sculpturing. Okay, means the layer is not smooth. It is rough. It is ornamented and it is very much thick. Now the question arises that exine is made up of its substance. So the exine is made up of a substance known as what the sporopollenin. It is made up of the sporopollenin. Okay. And this is a fatty substance. This is a fatty substance. And this is sporopollenin substance, which is forming the exine, is highly resistant. It is a highly resistant substance. Means it is not decomposed by any biological or physical agent. We can say that it is biological and physical resistant substance. And it is not easily decomposed. And that's why we can see that these pollen grains are preserved for a long time as fossils. Pollen grains are very small, but then too they are not destroyed, right? And they are found in the form of what fossils. Why? Because they are having a resistant layer around them. And this resistant layer is known as what? The exine. Now the question arises that which substance or which bodies are responsible for the thickening of the exine? 
so you must know that there are special lipid bodies there are special lipid bodies known as the ubish bodies which are secreted by the tapetum you must know that there is a layer around the anther that is known as the tapetum and tapetum secretes special bodies known as the ubish bodies this ubish bodies are lipid in nature so the ubish bodies secreted by the tapetum help in the external thickening of the enzyme means the external thickening of the enzyme or the or the thickness of the enzyme is increased by the bodies released by the tapetum and these lipid bodies are known as what the ubish bodies why because these bodies get coated with what sporopollen and that's why they are responsible for increasing the thickness of the enzyme not only this you must also know that there are germ pores there are germ pores in the enzyme layer enzyme layer is not continuous you can see here in also the diagram also that this dotted portion is suggesting that this is an enzyme but you can see that there are many places at this place at this place at this place you can see that enzyme consist of enzyme is not a continuous layer enzyme consist of enzyme consist of germ pores and through these germ pores through these pores in time comes out in time comes out in form of pollen tube like this you can see that this is an entine layer so and this is the germ pore so from here what comes out the pollen tube the pollen tube comes out okay and this is what the entine layer this is entine layer and this is what the exine layer so entine comes out through the germ pore in the form of what the pollen tube okay now there are three germ pores there are three germ pores in dicot plants a pollen grain of a dicot is having three germ pores and one germ pore one germ pore is found in the pollen grain of the monocot okay so three germ pores in a dicot pollen grain and in a monocot pollen grain how many germ pores are present one germ pore is present now the next comes to be the entine layer the second layer surrounding the pollen grain is the entine layer now the big difference between the actine and the exine is that just below the exine what is present entine is present and it is a thin layer it is a thin layer and it is not ornamented it is a smooth layer it is a smooth layer and the substance which is making the entine you have seen that the exine was made from a fatty substance known as what the sporopollenin but this is entine is made of is made of pectocellulose it is made of pectocellulose what is pectocellulose pectin plus cellulose is equal to what the pectocellulose so this i am talking about the entine so these were the two important layers which were surrounding the pollen grain one is known as the exine another is known as the entine now i will be also talking about uh, another layer which is found in insect pollinated plants in insect in insect pollinated plants a uh, oily thick viscous layer is found around is found around pollen grain this layer is called this layer is called pollen kit this layer is called as pollen kit what i want to say particularly only in the insect pollinated plants it means i want to say entomophilous plant what are entomophilous plant which are insect pollinated plants in insect pollinated plants a oily thick a oily thick viscous sticky layer is found around the pollen grain and this sticky layer is called as what the pollen kit and this you must know that this pollen kit is made of it is made of lipid and carotenoids it is made up of lipid and carotenoids now the question arises that what is the function of what is the function of pollen kit 
so the function of pollen kit is that that it is sticky in nature so it sticks so it sticks sticks to insect body it sticks to insect body and thus helps in pollination it helps in pollination the second role is that that it prevents it prevents pollen grain from harmful uv rays it prevents the pollen grain from harmful uv rays and it is also acting as acts as insect attractant it is also helpful as insect attractant due to the pollen kit the insect are attracted towards the pollen grain and hence what will happen the act of the pollination will occur so you must know also about the pollen kit we have discussed about the pollen kit we have discussed about the exine layer we have discussed about the entine layer and one more thing about the pollen grain is that that whenever we can say it as that pollen grains pollen grains of sergenia sergenia lethalis plant are poisonous the pollen grains of sergenia lethalis the pollen grains of sergenia lethalis plant are what they are poisonous okay and the honey contaminated contaminated by the pollen grain of this plant caused many deaths many deaths in brazil because this plant is found in the brazil and from the pollen grains of this plant known as the sergenia lethalis contaminated the honey and the contaminated honey caused many deaths in the case of what the brazil okay so you must know that pollen grains may be sometime poisonous okay as we know that pollen grains are rich in pollen grains are rich in carbohydrate fats proteins water etc and hence and hence now a days they are now a days they are used to make they are used to make pollen syrups pollen syrups and tablets in western countries not in our country but in western countries to increase to increase the athlete performance to increase the athlete performance in sports persons it can it is having the power to increase the athletic performance in the sports person and that's why the world over athletes are nowadays taking the pollen syrup center tablets in the western countries so pollen grains are rich in carbohydrate protein fat means they are acting as a source of nutrients and that's why they are nowadays in western countries used to make pollen syrups and tablets which are increasing the athletic performance in the sports persons okay now sometime these pollen grains sometime there are some plants right and the pollen grain produced by that plants can cause allergy and that is known as what the pollen allergy pollen allergy so the pollens pollens of some plants pollen of some plants can cause can cause allergy for example for example carrot grass 
if you have heard about the carrot grass known as the parthenium carrot grass known as the parthenium okay second we can call it as chinopodium chinopodium amaranthus right these are some plants which can cause what the allergy so the pollen released by these plants pollen released by these plants amaranthus chinopodium carrot grass can cause allergy and due to this and due to this person may suffer from person may suffer from asthma bronchitis and many other many other respiratory tract and many other respiratory tract disorders many other respiratory tract disorders okay and the pollen grain and at the last you must know that when the pollen grain germinate so a pollen grain when germinates pollen grain when germinates it is called as it is called as male gametophyte it is called as what male gametophyte a germinated pollen grain a germinated pollen grain is called as what a male gametophyte so whenever a pollen grain germinate it will be called as a male gametophyte right so this was all about the description of a pollen grain we'll be soon coming with some new videos keep watching thanks a lot